Another very interesting application of Bernoulli's equation is how airplanes stay in the air. And the way that really works is this. Let's say we take an engine of an airplane and we cut it open so we can see the cross-sectional area. So this is the wing, uh, cross-sectional area of the wing. Air will flow above the wing and air will flow below the wing. And it turns out the wing is shaped in such a way that it's more bulging at the, at the top than compared to the bottom. And so the air that has to flow over the wing has to travel a greater distance than the air that has to travel below the wing. Since it has to travel a greater distance in the same amount of time, because eventually all the air molecules have to make it to the other side of the, the wing, they just don't disappear, they have to stay there, the speed of the molecules above the wing is greater than the, than the speed of the air molecules below the wing, and since the speed is greater above the wing, there's less pressure above the wing, so less air pressure pushing down, more air pressure pushing up, and it's the difference of that pressure that causes the airplane to stay in the sky. So, let's say for an example, we have an airplane, it has a mass of 5,000 kilograms, and it has wings, each of them with an area of 50 square meters. And let's assume in our example that the air above the wing moves at 400 miles per hour, and the air below the wing moves at 300 miles per hour. Will that cause enough of a pressure difference to keep the airplane in the air? Now, I haven't worked out this problem yet, so I don't know. I'm kind of curious, so let's go find out. Well, first, before we get started, let's convert the miles per hour into meters per second. And to do that, we have to go like this. This is equal to, let's say, we need meters at the top, we need miles at the bottom, and one mile is 609 meters. And then we have to convert to seconds. We need seconds at the bottom, hours at the top, one hour is 3,600 seconds. So let's see how many meters per second that is. So we have 400 times 1609 divided by 3,600, and it looks like 170, uh, let's just call it 179 meters per second. And then to, for 300 miles per hour, so that's uh, divide by uh, four times three equals, and that would be 134 meters per second. So this would be 134 meters per second. Oh, not per second square, but simply per meters. Okay, so now we're going to use Bernoulli's equation. So, to do that, we write P1, pressure 1, plus rho g h1, plus 1 half rho v1 squared, is equal to pressure 2, plus rho g h2, plus 1 half rho v2 squared. And now I have to pick a 1 and a 2. Let's call 1 above the wing. Let's call 2 below the wing. All right. So, uh, let's see here. Since the height above the wing compared to below the wing is just a few feet, just a meter or so, it doesn't really make any difference because the air, you know, the air pressure relative to the height will be very, very similar above and below the wing. We can probably just go ahead and ignore these two terms. So just get rid of them. If you subtract them from each other, you can just simply get rid of them. Now, um, we want pressure 1 minus pressure 2. Now we expect pressure 2 to be greater, so I'm going to solve this whole equation for pressure 2 minus pressure 1. So I'm going to move pressure 1 over here, and move that over here. So we have 1 half rho v1 squared minus 1 half rho v2 squared is equal to pressure 2 minus pressure 1. Remember, we expect a greater pressure at the bottom than at the top. Flipping the equation around, I get pressure 2 minus pressure 1 is equal to, and in so, in, uh, factoring out of 1 half times rho, I'm left with a v1 squared minus v2 squared. So this will give me the pressure difference above and below the wing. All right, plug in the numbers. This is equal to 1 half times the density. Now let's take the density at sea level, and then of course you can imagine as the plane goes higher and higher and higher, and the density gets smaller, that also means that the pressure difference will get smaller. So there's a limit as to how high planes can fly before the air gets so thin that the difference in the pressure is no longer sufficient to keep the plane in the air. So let's just simply call the density here at sea level. That would be 1.29 kilograms per cubic meter. And then multiply the times V1 squared. Now V1 would be, um, let's see, the V at the top, that would be the 179 meters per second uh, squared at. In the, oop, I'm not dividing anything here. Let me write that again. So it would be um, 179 meters per second 
I have to square that like that, minus the speed at the bottom, which is 134 meters per second, and we have to square that as well. All right, so let's do that now. So 179 squared minus 134 squared equals, multiply the times, 1.29, and divide it by 2. <clears throat> and what do we get? So I can see that this is 9,085 newtons per square meter. All right, so that would be the pressure difference between the top and the bottom. Now, what would be the total force? Now, the total force on the plane, pushing the plane up, would be the pressure difference times the area of the wings. So the force is equal to the change in the pressure, difference in the pressure times the area. The difference in the pressure is 9,085 newtons per square meters. Multiply times the area, the area would be 50 plus 50 or 100 square meters, 100 meters squared. And so what do we get? Hmm, 100 times 9,000, that would be 908,500 newtons per square meter. Oop, oop, no, square meters cancels out. So simply would be newtons. Okay, well, that seems like an awful lot. Probably because I made the wings really big for a small plane that is only a mass of 5,000 kilograms. And now let's see what would be the weight of the plane. Of course, the force pushing the plane up has to be bigger than the weight of the plane. So the weight of the plane is the mass times g, which would be 5,000 uh, kilograms times a g of 9.8 meters per second squared. And I know I'm kind of crunching in here. There's not a lot of room left. So uh, if I multiply that, so 5 times 9.8 equals, that would be 49,000 newtons. So we have a plane that has a weight of 49,000 newtons, and when the plane is flying at sea level, a force holding it up of 908,500 newtons. So this plane will have no problem staying in the air. Now, however, as the plane gets higher and higher and higher, and the density of the air gets smaller and smaller and smaller, let's say the plane goes to an altitude of 30,000 feet, about 10,000 meters, then the uh, density is only about a quarter what it is at sea level, which means that the force holding up the plane would only be a quarter. But again, in this example, if I divide this by four, and I come over here and compare it to the weight of the plane, not a problem at all. So, you can see that there's a lot of practical examples for Bernoulli's equation and its applications. Hopefully by now, looking at all these examples, you have a pretty good idea of how to use Bernoulli's equation in these types of problems.